What's up, guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash bro revenge again all the time. Here we go. All right, so today we just have a ridiculously long story. Uh, it's called A Roommate, A Teaching Assistant, and bye, Felicia. Background. In 1992, I'm a sophomore at a very large university in a southwest desert state that's known for this gigantic natural wonder in the northern part of the state. I'm living in the dorms with a jerk-off of a freshman roommate who joined a fraternity and only stays in the dorm when he needs a mostly private place to get laid. I'm not against fraternities. I actually joined one later in my college life, and no, it was not the same as jerk-off roomies. The fact that he got into that one made my decision easier when I decided to join a different one. At the time, I'm an engineering major, which means a lot of science and a lot of math classes. I also work about 25 to 30 hours a week because I'm putting myself through college. The scholarship only covers tuition and housing, but not books, food, or pretty much everything else I might need. My job is on campus, and since I was the new guy, my shifts were basically 4 to 10 p.m. with the occasional all-day Saturday, or 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. My work was pretty much answering phones and dispatching technicians until 7 p.m., and then it turned into a computer helpline of sorts for the unsupervised terminal labs on campus. Frequently, there was nothing to do, so I spent a lot of time doing homework or playing X-Tank with other students across campus. Occasionally, though, I would get the call about someone playing MUDs, or multi-user dungeons, via the dial-up connections. One of those stories ended up in r slash malicious compliance. Jerk Off Rumi, though, is a business major, with the quotation marks and everything, which in the early 90s was basically the same as undecided. So his class load was things like Sociology 101 and World History 101. If they'd offered Underwater Basket Weaving 101, he would have signed up for it. My classes were spread out around campus, but having had my bike stolen the previous year, I got around campus on rollerblades. My math class, Ordinary Differential Equations, ODE for those that know the pain and suffering, was held two buildings from my dorm, so that was just a short walk away. Like most major research universities, the majority of my classes were taught by teaching assistants. For my ODE class, the teaching assistant, we'll call him ALF, was a graduate student from a northern European country that rhymes with go away. <laughs> the incident. I came back to the dorm late after working an extra long shift. I had an ODE midterm the next morning at 8 a.m., so I set my alarm for 7 a.m. to be able to get up, get dressed, and have a quick bite before class. My ODE class was unusual in that Alf decided that he was going to have two tests and no graded homework for the entire semester. The midterm was 40% of the grade. The final was 60%. I had been studying for this midterm for the past couple of weeks, doing all the optional homework assigned while at work, so I felt pretty confident I would get a pretty high grade on it. Jerk off Rumi was not there, and I didn't expect him there as it was midweek. His fraternity usually didn't start partying until Friday night. I took the opportunity to make sure I had everything ready on my desk before jumping in the shower and going to sleep. I awake the next morning to a ton of noise outside the door. I'm thinking, what the heck? I look over and jerk off Rumi is sound asleep. The room smells like weed and alcohol, and there's an empty bottle of Jim Bean in the trash. I look over at my clock, thinking it's like 5 in the morning, and it is completely off. I start to panic and throw open the curtains. Bright sunlight greets me. Students are leaving the building in droves with their backpacks, bikes, etc. It dawns on me. It's gotta be close to 8 a.m. I rush over to my closet and check my watch. It's 8.15. Jerk off Rumi starts to whine. Close the curtain! <sighs> what the hell did you do? I yell at him. What are you talking about? <sighs> My alarm! What did you do to it? Oh, I turned that crap off. It was too loud and I don't have class until 11. You mother father! I have an 8 a.m. I quickly threw on some pants, grabbed a couple of pencils and my calculator, grabbed my shoes and ran out the door. 
looking like crap but hoping I could make it in time and have some time left for the midterm. It took me five minutes to sprint to the building and up one flight to the classroom. I barge in, and Alf gives me a look. I quickly explain that my roommate turned off my alarm, but I'd still like to take the midterm with the remaining time left, and I'll take whatever grade I get, knowing that 40% of any points is better than zero. Teaching assistant leans back in his chair and smiles. No. Huh? I must not have heard him right. I ask him to explain what he means. No, you're more than 15 minutes late for class. I'm not allowing you to take the test. I basically beg him in front of the entire class to let me take it because of circumstances that were not my fault. He gives this big smile and says, I said no. That's the end of it. Maybe next time you'll consider my time and be on time for my class. I'm literally shaking at this point. I'm so mad. I say in a loud voice, fine. I'm not setting foot in your class again until the final. And then I'm going to ace your freaking final and make you grade it in front of your professor. He laughs and tells me he'll see me in May. I storm out. The Revenge, part one. Jerk off Rumi was the first to get his. I just had to wait for the right moment. That moment didn't take too long. It was a campus rule that students under 21 were not allowed to bring or consume alcohol in the dorms. It was also law at the time that weed on campus was illegal as the university was a public, state-run institution. Again, this was 1992. There were no such things as medical marijuana cards back then. Jerkoff Rumi had the same pattern every time he hooked up with a girl. Take her back to the dorm, the two would smoke some weed and drink, have sex, then pass out. He always put rubber bands on the doorknob to let me know he had company. The next time the rubber bands were on the door, I waited until I could hear them going at it. Then I went and got the wing's resident assistant and claimed I had locked myself out and left my key on my desk. My resident assistant was a by-the-book Navy ROTC cadet, so he made me fill out the appropriate paperwork, then went to unlock the door. The smell of weed and sex hit us both the moment the door opened, and jerk off Rumi and his skank were so stoned, skank, hey, take it easy, <laughs> were so stoned that they didn't notice we were in the room until the lights came on bong and baggie of weed sitting on his desk, and a half-empty bottle of Jack on the floor next to the bed with her lipstick around the mouth. Resident assistant roared for her to get out. She grabbed her clothes and booked it nude down the hall to the bathroom to the cat calls of the other guys in the wing who poked their heads out of the rooms to see what all the commotion was about. Jerk off Rumi, with blue balls now, had to get himself dressed. Then the resident assistant collected the bong and leftover weed, plus the bottle of Jack, and marched him past all the hooting and hollering bystanders in the hallway to the dorm manager's office suite. About ten minutes later, two university police officers pulled up outside the building. That was the last I ever saw of Jerkoff Rumi. Jerkoff Rumi's parents showed up the following week to gather his things. I didn't say a word to them, just put on my headphones and continued studying. Resident assistant told me later that he was expelled from the university for violations of code of conduct and for the drug arrest. His fraternity kicked him out just as fast, since they didn't want to have campus police raiding their parties. One down, Alf was next. The Revenge, Part 2. Now, every student has an advisor to help with class selection and sign off on things like grade replacement options or prerequisites. Normally, your advisor is in the same college as your degree, so technically, my advisor should have been from the College of Engineering. However, my advisor, Dr. Old, was a family friend and a former high school football teammate of my dad's. When I was accepted at the university, he called and offered to be my advisor, even though he was in a different department. So my first visit was to him to see what could be done about Alf. He agreed with me that Alf's actions were reprehensible, but quite honestly, Alf did have the ability to deny me the chance to take the exam after showing up so late if it was in the syllabus. I asked him if he could find out who this guy's professor was so I could at least make sure that my final exam was graded fairly. I was more than a 
afraid that even if I aced the exam, he would lie and say I didn't. Dr. Old agreed that it should be doable under the circumstances, so he said he'd ask around. I then studied my ass off for the next couple of months going to tutoring sessions and doing almost every single homework problem in the book. I spent a lot of late nights at work reviewing and re-reviewing problems and sample exams in the book. Dr. Old, during that time, got back to me and said he'd found the professor in question and that the professor was willing to take the time to grade the exam. Then he told me that there was one other thing pertinent to the incident, and I could not stop myself from cussing up a storm. This TA was definitely screwed. Final exam. I showed up 30 minutes early, sat in the front row, dead center across from Alf's desk. Two pencils, calculator, and three sheets of blank paper for scratch paper, and nothing else. No backpack, no notebook. We had to turn in all scratch papers as part of the exam to make sure no one cheated and pre-wrote formulas or example problems on them. When he showed up, he was surprised to see me there waiting patiently. I told you I'd be here. The stare I gave him made him uncomfortable. I finished relatively early, which he noticed. He asked if I was going to hand in my exam. Not right now. At the end, when the last student finished and left, I stood up with him. I know you have received an email from Professor Young, and your instructions are to bring the exam to him for grading. That got his attention. I'm going to be walking with you to the math building right now to take this exam to him, because I don't trust that you won't try to switch my exam with someone else's or lose it on the way. Alf shrugs, gathers the rest of the exams, and walks out. We make it over to the math building, up to the 8th floor. I head to the math department conference room. Alf says, You're going the wrong way? Nope, I say. You're meeting Professor Young in here. Sure enough, Dr. Old and Professor Young are sitting at the conference table chatting up a storm. On the table in front of them was the class syllabus. Alf, seeing this, gave me a look over his shoulder. Instead, I politely greeted Dr. Old and sat down next to him. Professor Young introduced Dr. Old as the math department head to Alf, then asked me if I had the exam, which I handed him. He asked Alf for the answer key and then began grading. I sat silently. Alf fidgeted a lot and Dr. Old double-checked the answers. Verdict? 100%. My D was assured. Alf got a smug look on his face. So you passed the class after all. Congratulations! Actually, it doesn't matter. Dr. Old already signed the paperwork for me to retake this class in Summer 1 as a GRO, no matter what the outcome here was. GRO, or Grade Replacement Option classes, could completely replace the previous grade of an F or D in a class, as if you had never taken the previous course. So, the previous bad grade didn't count in your GPA. However, back in the early 90s, you could only do so three times in a student's academic career. You needed the sign-off on your advisor as well. By 1992, most every student at the university knew the procedure. GRO, says Alf. Then he gets this hunted look as it dawns on him that Dr. Old is actually my advisor. He glances over at Professor Young, who is holding a copy of the syllabus. So, Alf, says Professor Young, can you show me where in your syllabus that it says that students will be prevented from taking any exam if more than 15 minutes late? Because that's not university policy. And it's clearly not this department's policy, chimed in Dr. Old. Alf grabs the syllabus and starts scanning it front and back, then slowly lets it drop back to the table. It's not in there sir, he said. So, by denying this student the ability to take the midterm, you violated departmental policy and academic policy then, replied Professor Young. If I recall correctly, this student begged you to allow him to take the midterm and said he would accept whatever grade he received for the limited amount of time remaining in the class. Is that substantially correct? Yes, sir. Both Dr. Old and Professor Young turned to me. I think you should probably leave at this point, said Dr. Old. We're going to finish this up and then discuss some personal matters. 
I'll call you later. So I got up and left. I'd be lying if I didn't say I didn't do a little mini dance in the elevator on the way back down. I got an email a week later from Dr. Old confirming my GRO class registration, along with a note saying that Alf had been fired for violations of university policy. He implied that Alf's graduate academic work was in serious jeopardy as well, as the university would most likely not allow him to transfer and continue on his master's work to another institution. The icing on the cake was that Alf, being fired for cause, could not get another teaching assistant position at any of the state's three universities and did not have the means or the time to look elsewhere, so he had to return to his northern European country. And yeah, I aced the summer class too, but this time I wasn't late for anything. Notes 1. Yes, email existed in 1992. Check RFC 821 if you're having timeline issues. Many of my professors in engineering used email to communicate with the students, although many of those same professors did not use the email system that you might think. They instead used the mail system that came with VAX or VMS operating systems, VAX mail. 2. Yes, people got arrested for campus violations and expelled for serious breaches like illegal drugs in the dorms. If you are trying to apply how things are to how things were 28 years ago, times have definitely changed in the interim. Like for example, weed is allowed now on campus if you have a medical marijuana card. 3. Why did the teaching assistant's paid position matter? Apparently, while his visa was sponsored, he could attend classes, tuition paid for via sponsorship? I don't know, I never was a foreign student needing a visa. He needed money for things like food, water, rent, academic supplies, notebooks, pencils, etc., gas for the motorized vehicle, assuming he has one. Those teaching assistant positions aren't volunteer, they are paid. But no job equals no money equals can't afford to live here. Academic policy violations equals no trust by the department equals sponsored visa issues. All of the above equals time to go home. Okay, first of all, uh, yes, Alf definitely did do wrong there, but I feel like the repercussions for doing that are a little insane. Maybe this wasn't his first infraction, uh, but that was swift and harsh justice. But hey, what are you gonna do? Well, not cheat people out of a good grade, that's for sure. <laughs> Especially if you're here on a visa. Don't, don't screw around like that, buddy. Americans love nothing more than kicking people out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.